Welcome to Open Frame, a podcast by Pixiesat, the place for photographers and other creatives to have inspiring, honest, and uplifting conversations. Hi, Claire. Hello, Nadia. <laughs> it's so good to see you again. I haven't seen you in like 24 hours. <laughs> I was going to say, how's the weather down the road? <laughs> I think it's the same as down the road from you. <laughs> different sun, different sun. <laughs> For everyone listening, Claire and I actually live um, two minutes apart. <laughs> so we're basically next door neighbors almost. Yes, I could spit on your window from here. <laughs> Please don't. Please don't. <laughs> There's already enough seagull poop on my windows. <laughs> don't need anything else <laughs> how are you today i am great thank you i'm trying to keep as warm as i can mm. um this is only my second full like going into winter in the uk so um yeah i'm just starting to get used to it yeah this is a perfect segue because i wanted to you to introduce yourself um like you just mentioned this is your second winter in the uk where are you from where did you move from um how are you finding life here what do you do uh you're really hard to introduce in like one sentence it's or one word it's impossible so i'll, <laughs> I'll leave it up to you um to tell us who you are fantastic this is like the most uh terrifying question for me often people say what do you do like, how much time do you have um but I am from South Africa originally so um grew up there and we've just recently moved to the UK um to Brighton and Hove we, we ended up in London moved around London a little bit didn't really feel settled and uh, yeah the ocean called us back so we've found our little um haven here in Brighton and Hove so really 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 happy here and I remember following you um, when I lived in South Africa and seeing all the wonderful treasures of Hove and thinking geez that looks like such a trendy place to be and I did not ever think that I would be living in yeah. the same place so it was a really cool preview <laughs> um, so yeah and uh, in terms of what do I do um, I do many things uh, I have some that I do as a, a source of income and a, a livelihood. And then there's other things that I do um, that are just kind of to fulfill my creative need. And those are very like sort of cyclical things. They change all the time. Um, but I have found that settling on one sort of thing to do that um, gives me a little bit of like a stability in, in income. Mm -hmm. um, my photography has to be my, my sort of starting point. Um, and I do wedding photography and portraiture and mm -hmm. creatives and pretty much anything that I can snap with a camera, I snap. <laughs> but, so, yeah. yeah, so that's kind of what, I, what yeah. I busy myself with. And then the creative side is, is kind of a cloud of things. <laughs> So Claire, you moved here from South Africa. Obviously, this is completely different market, completely different culture. Well, maybe not completely different, but um, how did you? How are you finding settling into your business here? Or like, did you feel like you were starting from scratch? Um, mm. Did you feel like you already had some kind of network leverage? Um, how did you find settling into life and business, running your business here? So um, we landed on Mud Island on the 29th of February, which was just before um, lockdown. So it has been a very, very interesting two years. Our industry kind of died with the pandemic. Um, so it was, yeah, it was, it was strange. I sort of assumed that I would arrive here and get back into the swing of things. Um, but in some ways, it really has been a blessing because it has forced me to do things. Um, you know, it has forced me to try out new things and forced me to be a little bit more creative in the way that I um, finance my life, essentially. I mean, that's in the end, you've got to kind of pay your bills. So 
Mm. Um, it definitely pushed me into the coaching realm a little bit more, which is um, amazing because I was kind of doing a dance with getting in that space. Um, and obviously with everything being on Zoom and the world being locked indoors, uh, it was the perfect time to kind of start building that um yeah just building that on the side so so that was cool but in terms of the photography um yeah I think it, it actually just forced me to slow down and think a lot about what it was that I wanted to be doing um and the type of people I wanted to be working with um which I think you can kind of get into a flow of just kind of working with what comes your way and you know, not really being intentional about what you're putting out and who you're attracting. So I think it definitely, it, it helped me push the pause button a little bit. Um, yeah. Like it did for a lot of other people as well, like that pause, that slowing yeah. down and questioning everything you're doing and how you're doing it and why you're doing it. Um, that has happened for so many people, hasn't it? Um, well, I'm yeah. glad you're here. I'm glad you're in Brighton. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> um, and I'm so excited about this conversation because we're going to talk about something that to me is like quite new um, mm. as a as a as a concept. I mean, not as, as something like I obviously I knew like this exists, but now it has a name that I've never heard before. Uh, before you told me about it, we're going to talk about multi-potentialites. <laughs> um, and I think a lot of people have no idea what that is, even though, yeah, when you hear it, you can kind of guess, but um, it's such a beautiful um, concept and kind of is helping me make peace with certain aspects of myself. Um, yeah. Because we kind of, we're ingrained to think the opposite of yeah. like narrowing ourselves down so I'm really excited about this conversation and even though as you just said the pandemic forced you to rethink things and try new things you've always been this way right you've yeah. always done more than one thing so that that's such an interesting question because I have I mean I my father would tell me constantly you want to do gymnastics, you start gymnastics, you do gymnastics for a week, then I buy you all the things you need for that. Then you want to do swimming, then you do swimming for it, and you want to do horse riding. And it was always like a little bit of like an irritation, you know, you're undisciplined, you need to stick to things, you've got no stickability. Um, so obviously when I, when I left, um, when I finished studying, I went into a job that was, my degree was used for, um, into an what agency. Did you, what did you study? So I did a, a BA in visual brand communication. So it was around like advertising, marketing um, and design. And I went into an experiential marketing agency and worked as an, an accounts executive, a junior accounts exec and a graphic designer for them. Um, and I learned so much because it was a small agency and I got to do a little bit of everything. Um, majority like female run as well. So it was really cool to be in that like environment. I had an incredible mentor um but it was definitely something that I realized wasn't for me and, and I couldn't understand why I was feeling you know the stress and like feeling like I wasn't in the right place mm -hmm. um and then I I sort of reached out and found photography as an an option it was never anything that I thought that I would do I mean I loved taking photos but it was never something that I thought I could make a, a career out of um and then I found a photographer who was looking for an assistant and I thought well let me just go and try it out and mm -hmm. I got hooked into wedding photography and it was incredible and I then left my full-time job to do photography which was um, much to my dad's horror um, <laughs> was the best thing that I did because it allowed me the freedom to sort of pursue my creativity and um, grow that but it's so interesting because I assumed, okay, I am now a photographer. Um, and then I think towards the end, you know, just before we moved here, I thought, well, I'm not just a photographer. I also want to be a coach. And then when we got here, then there was this kind of thing of so many opportunities and so many things to do. And I, it was terrible. I mean, I was in tears like every week, like, I'm, I don't know what I am. I don't know what I want to be. And if I have like a book of mind maps that I drew trying to just like pin down what do I want 
to do like what is my plan and every time I would make this plan it would just change so I think I just got to a point where I was like I give up I don't know what I'm going to do I don't know what I who you know how am I in this position that I don't know you know how can I be 30 32 and not know what I want to do mm-hmm. um and I think that's when I reached out to I had done a human design before I uh, never really kind of delved into it much um it was very just very interesting to me and it wasn't the thing that I kind of um, did any research on and then I kind of pulled that up and started going through that again and every single like marker in that human design reading was like you are not meant to have structure you are ignited by things that bring you joy and when you are enjoying yourself and getting lost in that process you attract other people who want to be a part of that process and that's how you kind of generate um, a community and perhaps you know make a living off of that particular thing and that happens with so many different things in that kind of galaxy of things um and I think that yeah that really started like opened the door for me into this Mm. space and this mindset that I'm in now which has been really really life-changing for me it's like shifted my perspective in, in a really really wonderful way uh, can you explain just roughly what human design is for people who have no idea what you're talking about? Oh my word, I'm probably going to butcher this. But <laughs> so human design um, is basically like you give your birth date and your position where you were born um, and the time, exact timing. And I, I mean, I think it's got something to do with the stars and how things line up. Uh, I, there's gates and channels and the diagram is very very confusing I take my hat off to people that read and that are human design readers because that is it it looks incredible so that is the extent of which my sort of layman understanding of human design is but they give you a a profile and then you get a certain um like a type I'm not sure what the what the um correct term is but like generator manifesting generator reflector projector um but a lot of the qualities of multipotentialites um, are, you know, the, the manifesting generators are raging multipotentialites. Um, mm-hmm. And that's where I kind of like made the, the connection. Um, yeah. And there's obviously so many people who, um, and I'm sometimes skeptical too, but I did my human design reading as well. Um, there's people like, oh, you can't use these things because like, it, or like Enneagrams or stars yes, or whatever. Yes or like Myers-Briggs test because they box you in and it's like too restricted. Um, However, I think like, especially if you do more than one of these, you know, personality and tests, whatever you want to call them. um, I think you don't have to use them to be boxed in. You could do like the opposite. It could just be like a little guide, um, something Mm. that explains to you how you work and 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 what the best uh, environment for you to thrive in could be for sure and I think it's exactly like what you said there is no specific you know right way to do something or this is um, valid and this is not valid if it's something that ignites something in you and it and it is helping you to move in the direction that you're wanting to move and then it's valuable and it's it's legitimate for you so yeah. I agree like I was very much on the fence like oh I don't know how I feel I'm like a little bit woo woo but also like a little bit my feet on the ground and kind of like jump between the two and and I you know kind of assume this is it's quite woo woo and but I cannot deny that going through that it was like a booklet on me and I just it was just so uh, I was so relieving to hear all of that information because it was everything that I had been experiencing for the last mm-hmm. 32 years. Mm-hmm. It has just been confirmed. And I just wanted to like run around and like show everyone this thing and be like, look, I'm not crazy. I have a manual. Yeah, that's how I felt. Yeah. When I read my human design uh, booklet, which is like my, it's like 65 pages or something yeah. ridiculous. It's literally like, I was like, this is like a Nadia manual. This is like a yes. manual about me. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? It's incredible. Incredible. And I think like that kind of, it, it really just gave me permission to say, okay, well, what if I am like this? Like, 
I, I mean, I was very kind of skeptical where it said like, basically you're just here to enjoy yourself. And I think like, who the hell do I think I am that I get to do that? Like in what world is, is someone allowed to just enjoy themselves? And it, it's so true. I mean, it's just like, I feel like it's like that way for everyone is essentially, but it's, it, it was just like quite difficult to, to um, understand. And I think since I've been surrendering to it more and more, things have just fallen into place. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I am, I'm a believer. <laughs> <laughs> we are believers. Um, I hear you on the, it's very, it's very strange to read that and, and it's, it's yeah you're here to enjoy yourself you have to let things come to you with ease and, and flow yeah. and all of that and you read that and obviously that is all cool and it sounds great but also there's a lot of privilege that comes with that as well like you have to also be in that position to be super flowy and easy <laughs> um, yeah and not everyone at every stage in their life um has that privilege of For just sure um enjoying themselves and uh and letting things come easy and that has to be mentioned as well like yeah um, I think that's super important um to say like for everyone that's listening it's you know it's not reading these things and uh going on these journeys um of self-development is you know so pe I don't know I think people can sometimes feel like failures um, yeah. like they're doing it wrong you know but there's, I think there's always um, uh, a stage for everyone. And like you say, I love how you say it. You, you say like, how, how, like, it's not always, it's not one or the other. And it's, yeah. not, um, it's not linear because it's, it's all like dots and they connect at some point. Mm -hmm. And that's it. I mean, it, it, if it's like you say, it's not just the black and white of like, this is how you must live your life. It's, ways that you can slowly start moving anything that is in within your reach and in your capability to move you towards something that feels right because in the end like you know what's right and wrong like you can feel it um and and whatever is accessible to you um you know to move you into that direction um it's and, and that is the biggest one of the biggest things with you know with multi-potentialites and and creatives is that there's this kind of pressure of like well it's either or like either you're going to do this full time, you're going to leave your job, you're going to go into it and like do this thing and it, or you, you become a slave to the, the rat race, but it's so not true. It's, true. it's, yeah, it's such a, it's such a um, idealized view. And I think this is what really terrifies a lot of people um, and stops them from exploring that avenue is that a lot of creatives that we were talking about the other day, a lot of creatives have, side jobs that they do that they're not particularly excited about but they're like you know things that keep their, their life stable so that they have the um the, the mental capacity and the stability to be able to play and do all those different things that they're doing so yeah. it's definitely not a thing of like you know leave everything and go and do that and if you don't you don't deserve to be a creative like <laughs> it's all about balance yeah amen that was amazing um so you did your human design profile and that opened yeah. the door for you as you said yeah. and then how did you stumble upon this world like multi-potential like thing the term and like this world like what the heck is it exactly <laughs> like how what's the definition because I feel like there was a day I feel like there was a day when you found out about this because your instagram was full of it <laughs> it, was like, it was like full check, of check, check. yeah like posts and books and like i was so mind blown i was like so i i watched emily wapnick's um uh, ted talk but i watched it quite a while ago i mean i remember sitting there ah like maybe oh. um, so it's it was called um uh, something like how are you a multi-potentialite or or mm. something about multi-potentialites and i thought like oh, that sounds like a definition of you know a real world definition of what I might be or, or how I like to work um so I re-watched I actually listened to a podcast that she was speaking on and she spoke about her book how to be everything so I bought the book and I ate it in like two days 
and it is incredible it was the first piece of material that i came across that really kind of categorized multi-potentialites which i know is, is sounds like it's counterproductive to try and categorize a multi-potentialite but actually it's like i feel like what we what we crave so much is just to kind of be able to have like a base or an understanding of you know what our capabilities are and yeah she um she spoke a lot about like multi-potentialites and how they can make a living and survive in the modern world and still be multi-potentialites and um you know a lot of it boils down to again having like the good enough job and exploring your certain things or like you might be i think she has like a few different uh, um types like the one was a, a phoenix where you like do something and then you get to a certain point where you're happy and then everything bursts into flames and you're reborn into the new thing and and there's like the specialist multi-potentialite that likes to get into something, become obsessed with it, do everything that they can do, know everything that they want to know. And then they just suddenly wake up and they say, like, okay, cool, let's start something new. And I want to get super into that and like learn. And you can also be a hybrid, you know, you can have a little bit of characteristics of each type. So mm -hmm. um, it was very like encouraging to kind of see it in, in black and white and say like, oh, wow, there's actually... A school of people that believe in this way of living and she she kind of gave uh gave me the pathway into finding barbara sure who is like my ultimate like multi-part um idol um may her soul rest in peace i think she actually passed away last year um but she wrote a lot of books um uh, that re refused to choose um yeah that that for me was like the best best work of hers as well because she has again like categorized like all the, the different and she calls them scanners mm. so there's many names for for this kind of way of being it's like multi-potentialized scanners polymaths um, renaissance people you know there's and this goes back to like ancient greek i mean there's like um polymath is like ancient greek and then there was an older da vinci who was a, a renaissance person so and uh, einstein as well was apparently a, a polymath because he was okay. into his music and he had many things on the go mm -hmm. so yeah and then finding her and um again seeing it in black and white it's categorized these are you know, people talking about this thing um and it just it, it just gave me so much confidence that's so cool because um like we we don't often hear about this and we don't often know even about people in the past like da vinci yes i knew like he he was doing a lot of different things um but for example einstein i didn't know that he was yeah he had a lot of things on the go because oftentimes people they become known for one thing yeah um, or become famous or have a breakthrough with one thing and that's when we put them in that box. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, this person is this. But actually, we we don't know what else they're doing or what else they did. And I feel like yeah. that um, in our world, there's this, maybe it's changing. I don't know. But I, th I think in people's heads, in the back of people's heads, it's still kind of like mm, more agreeable and more acceptable to be a master of one mm, instead of mm. like a jack of all trades yeah it's, it's like that it's painted in a negative light if you can't decide what you want to do yeah that's such a a great observation around that because that's sort of a jack of all trades and the master of none I, i'd always known that saying um but the full thing of it is a jack of all trades and master of none but oftentimes better than a master of one and it's so it's so true. And Emily Raffnick talks about this. She says, We never hear bizarre. this. We never hear the rest we of it. Never. Them. And she's like, how bizarre that the world would kind of like scrutinize people that have many interests. But who the hell wants to be a one-trick pony? Like, surely that is is something, you know, like flip it on its head. Like, do you only do one thing? Like, and we've all seen in this recent, you know, the world has completely changed. Yeah. And those, you know, people that, that have one um, sort of like specialty and one thing that they do, like we cannot live like that anymore. You have to be multifaceted. You have to be like companies are focusing on diversity because of the very fact that it is strengthening. It is, it is important to, to, to be diverse. It is important to have multiple interests and multiple um, 
levels of experience. So I, I think, yeah, I think we've been lied to. <laughs> definitely. We've definitely been lied to. And there's like, this is like more, this is the right way to be a grown up, and this is the right way to be an adult and to live life. However, I mean, there are people who find it really hard to do different things and like they need to like just have one thing and they have maybe one specific passion like for for all of their life like and and that's yeah. and that's perfectly fine too um but i think deep down we're all obviously we're all interested in more than one thing and yeah we can all be good at more than one thing as well it's just such a great way of thinking I mean you don't even have to necessarily categorize yourself as a scanner or a polymath or whatever but it's just a great way of moving through the world and being mm -hmm. being curious you know being the eternal student it it doesn't hurt anybody to to try you know it, it strengthens your character to to try new things and to be uncomfortable and to to you know get into things that you don't know necessarily know how to do but something that you might be interested in and I think that's another a big thing is you know this sort of sick, sickness of exceptionalism which is um uh mark what is it subtle art of how to give birth. I don't know what his 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 book is but he speaks about like the the um sickness of exceptionalism and how you know when you start something out you're not going to be amazing at it um you've got to make a lot of shitty art before you make that masterpiece and um people are, are afraid to kind of pursue things because again is that like either or like either you do a full throttle or you don't and um yeah so i think we just all need to try new things do them badly and then learn and get better at them that is a really hard thing to do <laughs> yes <laughs> to do, something, to do something badly especially for some of us for me it's really really hard like when yeah. it's really hard to start out small and like start out which is obviously it sounds crazy now that I say the words out loud because when you start you always start small yeah <laughs> <laughs> like you can't start up here but for yeah. me it's like really difficult and I read this thing last night that made me laugh out loud um do you know the co-star app mm -mm. Uh, the it's a it's a, like an astrology app and I follow them on oh, Instagram. Yes, 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 you told me about that one, you. Yeah, and I follow them on Instagram, and they their posts are so funny. And yesterday they posted, um, uh, the star signs life's mottos, like their mottos for life. And every star sign had like one sentence, <laughs> one one line. And Leo, which is me, said, <laughs> um, "If at first you don't succeed, give up." <laughs> That is so Leo. Oh my God. And I was like, mm, yep. <laughs> there's this That's thing it. like, if there's this thing in me, not just because I'm a Leo, of course, it's just like, um, I, I'm, I'm sure other people have that too, but there's this yeah. thing which has to do with ego and fear. Like if I, if I don't succeed the first, on the first go, if it's not amazing the first time, I'm, I'm not going to touch it again. <laughs> yeah. No, I can't be seen failing at this it, it is it's very much about that kind of the, the fixed and growth mindset um yes, yes. yeah dr do carol think, dwight do you think multi-potentialites are they sound they would sound like people who are generally less afraid yeah or or like uh, just have that growth mindset they just go for it anyway yeah, I think it's I think it's a, a sense of curiosity, um, and for sure, I mean, if you're going to try out a whole bunch of different things, um, you know, whether or not it's they're less afraid or they are more comfortable with doing something afraid, because you obviously there's no absence of terror when you're doing something new that you could be um, judged on. But um, you know, it's that thing with with the the bee um you don't go into something like a bee a bee moves from flower to flower try something you don't have to be amazing at it when you've got what you've come for move on to the next thing so you don't have to make everything perfect you can dabble uh you know take what you want from there and then change and then come back and then it's it's that that whole thing of like the it's not a linear path it's not a thing of climbing that ladder to excellence it's 
a little bit here, a little bit, you know, there's that squiggle line of like what it's like to be, a, you know, a freelance, whatever. It's, yeah. it's not that kind of gross thing. <laughs> um, I wonder, I'd like to know for you, have you ever felt like a failure because of your many interests i know you also really really are into food and not just like some people you know they like to cook but you're really really into it like <laughs> doing incredible things and experiments and recipes and then photographing it beautifully like you do it's so so stunning it's like work that should be like a book um and you do illustrations and like you, you have so many like interests um And also for who doesn't follow you on Instagram, Claire also writes beautifully. Like her writing is amazing as well. You're, you're a proper oh, multipotential. Stop. Oh, stop you. <laughs> you really are a proper, proper multipotentialite. And <laughs> have you ever felt like you're not right this way? Um, mm. How, like, do you still, I know like now that you, you found the language for it and you found like this community kind of, yeah. and you feel more comfortable with it, but do you sometimes still struggle with embracing that? So I think it all comes down to what your definition is of success, because I think to some extent, I was putting a lot of pressure on all these different avenues to be successful to, and in my words like in my um idea of what success was it was something that generated an income so that I could do that as my job that's why I laugh when people say like what do you do because what does that mean like do you mean the thing that I do that makes money and then why is that when the only one that's kind of important and so it is it's it's about getting yourself into a position where all of those different projects, you don't put a lot of pressure onto them initially so that you can kind of dabble and play because the creative process is the most important part. I mean, the photographs of the food and the, you know, the final product is great, but like what happened in the process? Because that for me is, is the most valuable. Um, now, I, it, it wasn't that way before I drove myself crazy because I would try and take that thing and make a product out of it and like do something with it and then being a multi-potential I'm like bored the next day everyone's like yes let's do this thing and then suddenly I'm like oh actually no 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 I'm over here now I'm like you're too late <laughs> so um yeah just kind of understanding that flow and saying like what does it mean to do this thing like what am I doing it for in my eyes it's a success if I'm just doing it and if I'm just dabbling in it and and you don't always have to kind of explain yourself to other people or you don't have to get anyone on board with your ideas um i think that's a really really important thing as well is is looking for external validation on your bajillion projects is just going to leave you feeling empty because mm. it's all like it's all work in, a work in progress so oh, i absolutely love this absolutely love that you said this because um there is this notion nowadays where it's so easy to create your own job even if it didn't exist before yeah I mean like tiktoker wasn't a job What? a while ago but now it is um so you can make your own job nowadays and there's this notion that every passion needs to be monetized yeah everything that you do for fun for joy that everything yeah. you're good at people are like oh you should turn this into a business you have to monetize Sorry, why do you think that is Good question. Capitalism? <laughs> Capitalism? I don't know. <laughs> Why is that? I don't know. <laughs> like, it, the, the, also the whole entrepreneur, blah, blah, the, the whole entrepreneur yeah. talk, and which I'm sometimes also like really tired of. Um, yeah. It's kind of, you get, kind of get pushed into that, do what you love, make your passion, yeah. also, also your work. Um, do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life like that yes. also it's like that one we can retire yes exactly and and actually it's like no not everything you enjoy not everything you you're good at needs to be monetized not everything yeah. needs to be a, a business where like where is the space for just play um where is the space for doing something because you enjoy it i think like that is one of the biggest 
um, kind of roadblocks in, in exploring all your different talents is that mm -hmm. there's no space for doing something just because you want to. Um, we always see it as like, oh, well, I don't have the luxury of time. I don't have, you know, if I'm doing something, it needs to be um, productive. Yes. Um, yeah. And I think I, what, what has helped me a lot with that is I also struggle to play. Um, I think every book I've read for the last few years has been a learning, like a, a self-helpy or a something that I'm learning. I, I, I haven't had, you know, sat and read like a story or a novel in years mm. because it was like, if I'm doing this, it needs to be building me towards something. But actually taking the time out and blocking off, you know, I have the privilege to be able to block off a, a day that I focus on playing because the the um the benefits that I see from that for myself as a person and how it affects me in my business, um, I prioritize that now um, and I enjoy it. It's that, and I protect it. And it's that little bubble that I've created that I go in there and who knows what I'm going to do, but I just fill and play. Yeah. And I believe that everyone can incorporate that into their lives. Yeah. I want to challenge people who are listening and who are like super busy, I think everyone can still do it. Um, it's yeah. definitely a privilege, you know, maybe not yeah. everyone can block off a day, a week, or take like a few months off or whatever, yeah. but everyone can find parts in their day. Even I was walking, out, literally just walking outside the other day and, and walked into, because <laughs> I was on my phone, very, very bad example. I was on my phone and walked into a pile of autumn leaves. It was just a huge pile of autumn leaves like um, in my way. And I just walked into it and I, stopped, <laughs> and I stopped and I just, I put my phone away instead of like taking a photo, actually. I put my phone away and I just started like, playing with the leaves That's like with, with my feet with my feet and I was like just like throwing them around and I was like thinking oh gosh hopefully the person that like piled them all up neatly doesn't see me now and I was swear at you out the window yeah, I was just enjoying the the crunchy noise and like the colors and it felt literally it was mm. I don't know how long 30 seconds or whatever but I felt in that moment I felt like a child. I yeah. it felt really, really, really good. And I think you just have to pay attention and yeah. you can have those moments of play in your everyday, even mm. if, if you don't have the time. Yeah. And I, and I think those moments of play, you know, it's easy to kind of view them as idyllic from the outside, but those moments of play are like therapy with yourself I mean the conversations that you have like there are days where I am beating the crap out of myself while I'm making something and I'm like this is not good enough you can't why just stop now like you know this is not but that process of sitting with that voice and and combating that like that is that to me is very valuable it's it's play but it's it's also you know it has its its uh polarities and and I think that time alone with that is very important that's interesting I, li I like that you said that it's therapy with yourself mm. and and it re it it kind of re reminds me of something you said earlier um and it explains it more um where you said for you like the process is what you're interested in yeah uh, what happens in the process what am I thinking how am I feeling why am I creating this um <laughs> it's kind of um that's beautiful like because yeah it can it can be therapy it can be exploration it can mm. be, it can be just for fun too like no higher purpose yeah um, but that process I think we're always so interested in results we're always mm. looking for the destination the goal the result what's the end product yeah. instead of instead of enjoying the process, even if it's a short process or a longer one, but just. Yeah. And also letting other people into that process. I think it's, you know, this is the, the, the problem that I have with social media and the instant gratification, um, you know, that kind of like show me that thing. And, and, and it's again, the exception, sickness of exceptionalism. And that was Mark Manson, by the way, I forgot his name. Um, and it is, it's like, 
do I do this thing quickly and just kind of get it done so that I can show it to the world? And, and mm -hmm. it's, it's such a, like, it's such an empty feeling where, where you put something out and everyone's like, yay. And then you, you, you're gone. Like then you, you know, you're onto the next thing, but that's sitting with that process and, and locking the rest of the world out and just enjoying it for what it is, is just like, that's the gold. That is the gold. Yeah. Yeah. That is so beautiful. And I'm so like excited to read more and research more about this topic yeah. and, and reading the book you mentioned and finding out more about multi-potentialites because I don't know which type I, I am of like of the ones you mentioned, but um, definitely a type that gets bored easily, like literally sometimes, mm. yeah, from one day to the next or um, sometimes it's phases, but I do get bored easily with something. And it's something I've struggled with my whole life because I, I yeah. feel like that's not right. You have to stick you have to be loyal to something. You have to stick to something. What are you? What do you do? <laughs> exactly like what do you what do you do like you have to stick to something so it's it, I've, I've definitely str I still struggle like um so I'm really excited to to read more about it and have like new language to describe um the situation so that's yeah. really cool and I think um some of the resources you know like Barbara Sher's books um I really really appreciate her work because she gives you actual tools to be able to manage the way that your brain works um and i think like it's i mean it's a, a common thing for freelancers or creatives or whatever we don't have a playbook we don't have this is how you you know we don't have kpis and so i love that that she's she's got these tools i mean these like simple things like having a file a ring binder for each one of your passions and have them on the shelf and when you are in your seasons so i always call my my things like very cyclical and seasonal i'll just wake up and be like oh i'm in my food phase you pull out your food file and you have like all your things that you've stashed or um you know you can have like digital files you can have you know whatever whatever works for you again it's like finding what what allows you to get into that flow um, and she has like different like stations that you build, you know, people, a lot of creatives and, and multi-potentialites, we stash things in our homes. So <laughs> every corner is, <laughs> every corner is stashed with an unfinished project or whatever. And, you know, she's got a tool where you have to draw out your house and it's called like the scanner map and you can circle in that room. Here is my, um, my clay figurine that's sitting there with all the stuff around it. Like, that is beautiful like that's a that's a workspace and you know over there is something that I've started building a mask that's a, a workspace or like my food books and and it's it's so special it's it's great because you can kind of like return to those things and and also another huge like um um thing that has helped me a lot is the scanner day book mm -hmm. um so it's basically like get a big book that and you just open a page and you put down your idea so like i'm mm -hmm. sure you have the same thing where you're going through your day and suddenly you're like oh this would be an amazing like idea and put it down write it get if you want to have like a little one that you have in your bag and you want to scribble on like a crazy person on, on the bus you know like but just put everything down and keep it together and then that's mm -hmm. that's kind of helped a lot as well amazing because as much as like we're creatives and sometimes we get a bad rap we also yeah. our, our brains also they do have some kind of structure and we need some mm. kind of some kind of frame to hold all these ideas and, sure. and and impulses and inspirations like it's not all a mess in there it's like it is there's some kind of system to it <laughs> <laughs> organized chaos <laughs> yes exactly there is a system like I need it I need like boxes and labels and colors um it really helps um beautiful but precisely because there's so much going on <laughs> like look if there's any like any excuse to buy stationery I'm down <laughs> that is also very true <laughs> I'm going to color code Ooh, I'm down <laughs> thank you so much Claire this was so helpful and really just really encouraging um i feel i feel a bit better now <laughs> um and i hope people who feel similar about their different interests and 
being a jack of all trades, I hope they feel encouraged to learn more about this topic, um, learn this new language around it, mm. and kind of really lean into it and embrace that it's okay to be multi passionate and it's okay yeah. to have different things going on at the same time. You're not a failure because of it. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much for shedding light onto this and yeah, just giving us a platform to, to speak about our findings. It's, it's really, really wonderful. So thank you so much for having me. Mm-hmm.